I think I found the best way to create AI generated workflows for NADAN. Check this out. So this is a lead qualifier system which is generated for me here, but check this out. So if I go to execute workflow, boom, it's super quick. Okay, super, super quick. We come over here to my telegram and I get all this information. Now, of course, this is just mock data, right? But essentially you would have your database, your CRM, whatever it may be, all that data flows through and boom, you get everything in Telegram in seconds. And you guys know I love my YouTube automation. So it's built a really, really simple one, which I can use with Telegram. And I can just literally go anime shorts. Boom, it's done. Okay. So we're going to get all the videos, how many views they're getting. Uh, and this is also in the last 24 hours. So these are going to be like all the top videos in the last 24 hours. So how is AI generating these small but very powerful workflows for me? Well, check this out right here. If I just run this command, this is Ken A10. I know it's pretty cringe, but this is what is developing, creating all of these AI workflows on pretty much autopilot. I don't really have to do anything. It's debugging. It's going through creating, uploading to NA10, doing essentially everything for me, right? So looking at this here, the reason why though this is working is because if you watch my previous video, I also made a community node, okay? And this community node is called Supercode. Now, this community node here is the one that is working with Ken A10 together to generate these workflows for us. And I can come over here and just simply say, list out all my workflows. And it'll actually go into my account, okay, via an MCP server, which I also created. And it'll actually list everything out for me, okay? So we can see I have a few workflows here. And then it's going to give a little conclusion at the end. So everything that you saw previously in my NA10 account is also viewable and, you know, is accessible by our agent here as well. And we can utilize literally any model that we want as well. So if I just put in the models command here, we have obviously we have Claude Opus 4.1, which is going to be, in my opinion, the best one to be utilizing. Um, we've got GPT-5. If we come down here, we have GLM 4.5 as well. And, you know, several dozen of the models that we can choose here. But if you want to get the most, you know, um, reliable models, I would be suggesting to use the Claude Opus 4.1 model, which is what I have by default. And then down here, we have the build agent, which is the one going to be generating workflows. The plan agent, which is going to be, you know, it's a back and forth process of planning things out. And then we also have the super code agent, which is just strictly for generating code for the super code node. All right, let's go through how easy it is to start generating workflows with this as well. So I put a stupidly simple prompt in here and I've just said, create a simple Reddit workflow, you know, output the top five posts from five random subreddits in the last 24 hours. Okay. Top posts as well. And, you know, make sure that the last response is formatted for Telegram. So it's nicely formatted so I can easily read it and use the public endpoint for this. So let's just press enter, send that off. So we can see here, you know, obviously we're using Claude Opus 4.1 and we're gonna start, okay? So here we go. All right, so we can see here that it's already developed the workflow, okay? So it's already created everything. It's already created all the code, all the nodes for it as well. Everything is pretty much good to go. Now it's going to just read through the file and then it's going to deploy it onto our NA10 instance as well. So it's actually just, you know, cross-referencing the original file. And what is great about that is you'll also get the original file in the JSON format right here as well. And this is really, really important because sometimes we do need backups, but the second important reason is if the agent needs to go in and make any, you know, edits and, and things like that, it can easily do this with a local file. Already we can see that this actual um, workflow has already been uh, deployed on our NA10 instance. So we can see success is true. Now it's going to do a test. It's just got an error. Okay. Now it's actually seeing what that error was. And it's gone in and made the fixes as well. And as we can see, it's because it forgot to put the response mode to last node. Now it's going to redeploy because it's already made the difference, um, the edit here, sorry, as well. Okay, so we can see it's already made that edit right there. It's reading the file again just to make sure it's in its context, it's in its memory, to make sure it's getting you know all the right information to be put through via the MCP. 
And we can actually go and see this right now in our account. So if I actually just load this up, there we go. It's already in there. Now, this is not the updated one. It's going to be uploading that in a, in a sec very, very shortly. But you can see this is already here one minute ago. There we go. And it's already completed everything and everything was successful. And that's pretty much it. So let's go in and I'm going to test this now. So I'm just going to give this a refresh because this will be the same one. Refresh that. I'm then going to put the little telegram node in here. Actually, we'll just check the executions as well. So you can see the first execution did fail because of the webhook. Okay, so we can see right here because it had respond to webhook node without the webhook um, respond to webhook node at the end, which was incorrect. So it corrected itself. All right. And then now if we look at the format for telegram response, here is a response right here. Okay, so there's a lot of stuff going on here. And this is actually performing live API calls as well. Okay, this is not just, you know, some mock information. This is live from Reddit happening literally right now. Okay, so if I just come back over here and I'm literally just going to put in a little telegram in here. We'll put send as a text message. Now, what's my chat ID? I'll have to get that in a sec. Um, we'll delete this. And just for the purpose of this video, you know, you could add this on a scheduled trigger, but I'll just put a trigger manually just for now. And ideally with this, you know, you would have it like, you know, 9 a.m. every morning, you get all the news of the day, right? Very, very simple. Um, but let's just save that for now. I'm going to go get my actual chat ID and we'll just pop on back over here. Chat ID. Now we'll have to run this one time just to get the data. Let's give it a little save as well. So we'll just go execute workflow. Going through the API right here with Reddit. Boom, it's done. Now I just have to correctly place this formatted, because um, this is formatted for Telegram node right here. And we're just going to place everything in here. And literally all we have to do now is, if I open up my Telegram again, okay, so it's not going to be here, obviously, but let's just, well, I'll just send that off and open it up again. And we should get all of that, you know, all the news of the subreddit and things like that. Oh, looks like I've missed something here. So bad parameters. What have I missed here? Mess oh, message is too long. Right, right, right. Okay, that's a good point, actually, because there is, actually, it is very, very long looking at all this. That is way too long for Telegram. So in that case, right, in, not that this is an issue. This works 100%. This is just an issue with Telegram itself. In that case, if I just wanted to make a quick little addition to that, okay, and I would just say the, uh, what's the Telegram message is too long for sending to Telegram. It needs to be shorter, okay? We'll do something like that. And I could even ask it to research this for me to, you know, go and see how many character limits are in the actual Telegram messages as well. We could definitely do that. But, you know, for the purpose of this video, we'll make it simple. All right. And just like that, we have the updated code. We have, you know, the new success message. And, you know, it's going through getting all the things here as well, showing us what's going on. Everything is complete we can just take that file again. All right, and we have the updated one here right now. So let's give this another little test. We'll just execute workflow. Let that go through. So it's going through an HTTP request to the Reddit endpoint there, formatted it for me as well, sent to Telegram. Do I get the message in Telegram? And yes, I do. There we go. Okay, so we have it at um, August 20th at 542, which is actually not my time, I assume my actual settings here. No, there we go, because I'm set on New York while I'm based in Australia. That's fine. That's not a big deal. If I really wanted to as well, I could just put in the schedule trigger. All right. And, you know, put a different time on it. Put it something like that. Put it on active. And then I would get that information from all the subreddits every day at maybe 9 a.m. or whatever it may be. Right. And we could just adjust that to our own liking. Here's the thing as well. Let's just say, for example, you're like, well, I don't really like that formatting, right? I don't want formatting like this. I want it to be like in a certain way or whatever it may be, okay? Um, that's absolutely no problem at all. You could definitely do that. And I can see here as well, 
we're missing like links to the actual subreddits and things like that, we would just go in and simply request it. So I could just say, uh, I also want the URLs to each post. Um, images, well, they're not rendering on Telegram here anyway, so we could just say, remove the images. What else is here? And make it look prettier. Readability, something like that. As simple, as simple as that, right? And then it's going to go in, make the little adjustments, make all the edits, you know, I mean, at this point, you're just back to YouTube scrolling up and down on it anyway. You're not sitting here looking at it like a hawk. A lot of people, right, they just utilize Claude, like the chat, or they might go to ChatGPT and, and ask them to make workflows there. The problem is, though, is that the information that they have on NA10 is very outdated. That's number one. Then you have things like you saying, well, maybe if I give all the documentation, it'll be better. That doesn't matter. Like, that's not the the actual problem with it all. The problem is, is how to utilize the nodes in a certain sequence, right? Properly with the, you know, newest standards of NA10 uh, workflow building and structure and everything, right? That's where all the large language models um, do not understand. They don't get that. Only people understand that. We understand that, right? Now, the way to get around that is obviously you can give them workflows to reference and you can do this, this and that, or you can just simply create really, really bad workflows. You can also do that. But essentially what the supercode node here is doing is handling everything that NA10 can already do, but in one singular node. So here's what I mean. If we come over here and all of these, you know, you've got the AI agent, we've got OpenAI, basic LM chain, the supercode node can do all of these, okay? It can also do, uh, well, this is all the integrations. It can also do all of this here as well. It can do all of this here as well, you know? So everything that NA10 does in singular nodes, like an HTTP request is just one node, right? This guy here, or girl, can do everything, can do all of those operations, you know, your HTTP request, your, you know, if you're using like set nodes, split out nodes and things like that, the supercode node handles everything. And that's why it is very, very powerful. And that's also why when utilized with a large language model, it becomes very, very reliable because now the large language model doesn't have to remember 20, 30, 50 different nodes and connect them all up, right? That becomes very difficult for a large language model to do. But what are large language models really capable in? Coding. And that's what this node allows them to do. Very, very simply, okay? Now, you might say, well, what's the point of doing all this if, you know, why not just uh, build out and code things yourself? I do that all the time, okay? I'm just giving an alternative of what is possible on NA10 as well. Because while I do agree that coding is fantastic and it's fun and I do a lot of coding, I mean, I'm, I'm doing it 14, 16 hours a day, to be dead honest with you, right? But here's the thing. A lot of people that I've found that I teach and members and, you know, the responses that you get back from, you know, the posts and the videos that you make, a lot of people still are very interested in no-code solutions as well. What Ken A10 does is allow people, right, that don't have any coding knowledge, that don't, you know, understand about all these things, to allow them to send just simple queries like, hello, you know, and they can start building some crazier things, even in something simple like NA10 as well. And if you do want to use those workflows I just made here, I will have them in the description down below. And if making these tools is really interesting to you, feel free to join up in the community. We would love to have you there as well. But if I don't see you there, I'll see you in the next one. Take care.